Did you ever wonder how would it be to have a winning trading bot? If it's even possible to have a program that executes winning trades on your behalf while sleeping or you're having free fun time? With or without programming knowledge you might have thought about it like me and maybe you've spent few hours, months, could be years to realize this mysterious code that would solve the grail and transform your lifestyle. When introduced to machine learning many might think that it can work wonders in the market. While this is true for a number of fields like marketing, sales and many others, there are two types of applications where machine learning still struggles. These are weather data and price markets predictions. And this is due to the highly random behavior of the numbers you get in those fields. So people often ask the same question, is it even possible to predict prices using machine learning? To be honest, the answer is a gray zone, and I would qualify it as a yes, only if the prediction type is coupled with the adequate trading strategy. Okay, so this is not an easy task, but the good news is that I'm going to tell you what mistakes will stop your model from working, avoiding these will increase your chances of success, sparing your time and energy. Let's start by the first beginner's mistake, fitting the price values into a machine learning model using a regressor. Trying to predict the next market value doesn't come this way. This method can give excellent results for values that are naturally correlated with some other measurables. For example, if you are trying to predict the price of a house, taking into account its surface. Machine learning regressors are your best choice in this case. However, there is no clear correlation between stock and currencies market and the time variable. There is no natural trend forcing the price in one of two market directions just because of the time parameter. Surprisingly, a lot of articles are positively advertising this method and in my opinion this is just selling dreams to unaware people. And if you're overfitting your regressor to price values, you'll get a very satisfying fit curve. However, this is the worst method you use machine learning as it will be uh, definitely destroying your account. Mistake number two, using absolute values as the modal input. Using prices or technical indicators values as they are is another pitfall. If you provide open, close, high and low prices values and even moving averages and other indicators, it doesn't mean that this information is enough to guess future values. Look at it this way. If I show you the price and three different moving average values and the RSI at a time t, would you be able to guess the current trend? Or probably the price average in few hours? You may notice it's quite a random and difficult choice. And the same goes for your model. The thing is that our brains are used to process information after seeing the global image and by processed information, we mean mainly the slopes of price movements and moving averages. Now, if I show you the whole price movement, you'd probably guess that the trend is up because you can visually estimate the general slope of the price movement. Mistake number three, sampling data using random train test data splitting. Are you familiar with the sklearn train underscore test underscore split function? Well, you should avoid it for price markets data. Although it's a very common procedure in machine learning to randomly split your data between training and testing sets, it is a very common pitfall while working with time series analysis. This I've seen even in published academic studies. If you use the train test split function or any similar procedure, you will be randomly choosing with a uniform probability among the data points. Let's consider here our price candlesticks. Imagine we use the function to choose 80% as training data for our model and the remaining 20% we will be using to test our model's precision. The thing is that our model will fit on your train set, however your test set is not that much of a difference. Any candlestick will be very similar to its neighbors considering all the parameters and the technical indicators. Therefore the adjusted model will have no problem in discovering the similarity and providing you with a good prediction since the outcome is similar to the training candlestick. In other words, you're presenting the model to the same situation twice. First time in the training phase, where you're also providing the answer on the future price, and the second time in the test phase. This means that you might get excellent results on back testing your model, however, the same model will struggle when confronted to the new live data.
Mistake number four, counting only on technical analysis. While machine learning models are based on numbers, using basic and custom technical indicators is compatible with any approach. However, even if your model is performing well on a time sample, this will not be enough on the long run if you didn't take into account the economic calendar. Stay away from big events as they might ruin your results and maybe discredit a good model. You may insert a function in your code that forbids executing orders before and after major events. Mistake number five, not considering a strategy that fits with the model's precision. Let's consider a model of 40% prediction precision. It might look like a losing model because 40% is below 50%, but this kind of accuracy can make you a millionaire if you combine it with the correct strategy. For example, using 2 to 1 take profit stop loss ratio would make each winning trade worth as much as two losing trades. In other words, one winning trade would make up for two losing trades. And in this case, any model precision above 33% can be a winner. You get the point here. Don't judge the model before combining it with an optimized strategy and backtesting it. Mistake number six, relying only on the model's trend prediction and skipping an entry strategy. Well, this is kind of related to the previous point. The idea is that even if your model delivers good predictions, you still have to know how to choose the best model to execute an order. In other words, defining a market entry strategy. Let's take for example this trend here and imagine that your model would predict the correct trend direction. It's an uptrend in this example, but if you execute buying orders at the wrong moment, you might end up being caught by your stop loss price before hitting your take profit. So you wouldn't get the expected results. And if you consider commissions and trading fees, this might even lead to decreasing equity, even though your model is providing good predictions. This leads us straight to the next point. Mistake number seven, not taking into account trading fees and commissions. While it's good to start thinking your model with a simple approach, disregarding fees and commissions might be a game changer for the majority of algorithmic trading bots. In reality, there is a very thin difference between a winning strategy and a losing strategy. And most of the winning technical models have an advantage of only few percents, I would say three to four percent. This advantage can be wiped by commissions and trading fees. However, you can avoid this by following a strategy, minimizing those fees, like for example, closing your trades in the same day and not leaving them overnight or during weekends. Next, backtesting the model over a small period. Just like the title says, you can't confirm a model is working until it is tested in different conditions. Take any model and tune it over a small period of time, it would look like a winner. And this is what companies selling winning bots do. They'll show you the month where their program gives positive results. But this doesn't mean that this equity trend will go on forever. In fact, it might be the only period over which the program satisfies your expectations. If you want to be sure of your results, you have to test your trading program over six months minimum. And if your results converge to a positive gain, then you can think of starting your investment. Our last point for this video is getting impatient and interfering in the trades when the model is not acting. A high precision model is usually not very sensitive to the market. In other words, it will wait for a strong signal before executing a trade. This is good as it would increase our chances of scoring a winning trade. However, we will be missing a lot of the market opportunities. A good trader would have created more chances probably than the program. But if you are not that good trader, don't get impatient and do not touch your account. Don't interfere on a side with the model. Don't open new trades and also don't close trades opened by your program. Even if it's been a month and you have no open trades, remember, zero trades is better than a losing trade. That's it for now. I hope this information will help you improve your trading experience. And remember, if your algorithm is not market ready yet, just don't over focus. Go out, order a nice hot pizza slice and don't forget to have fun.